Hola, welcome to the channel and this week's video, which is all about codependency. Have you found yourself in a codependent relationship? Are you a kind of codependent person? Do you have this trait within you? We're gonna explore it, look at it, see how it develops, and also move into how we can actually break out of this kind of negative cycle, this kind of, sometimes it's triangular, uh, way of being. First of all, codependency uh, is a term that was developed from something which was called co-alcoholic. So it was first kind of noticed, if you like, or really defined in that way. Whereas some, where, where someone is an alcoholic and uh, the family members enable that and alcoholism, um, in a way that it's kind of like rescuing and staying as a victim, it's like enabling. So it turns into something quite, not sinister sometimes, yeah. This kind of, I need you to be ill in order for me to feel good because then I can rescue you and bail you out, um, look after you, which gives me purpose, role, satisfaction and fulfillment. And I need you to look after me because then I don't have to take responsibility for myself and feel difficult, uncomfortable feelings and face the world in such a way where I have to take responsibility for myself was kind of the basic precept of it. And then it was noticed that this can happen in different uh, ways within different relationships, different types of relationships, working relationships, within family relationships, and also within romantic relationships, where it then turned into codependency. It's like there, there, there is this um, natural progress which can happen or process where we begin to become dependent on the other and they become dependent on us and one of you will have something going on with you. So this can happen, for instance, with maybe someone who is incapacitated in some way, so they have an illness or they've had an accident some kind of inability somewhere to be able to function very well and the other person can begins to take on the role of a carer, um, an enabler, um, and they end up in this not so nice dynamic, as I said, of this codependency. I need you and I need you to be this way for me to feel fulfilled and, and have meaning and, and uh, well, I need you to do that for me because then I can stay where I am and not move so much. You can also look at, I'll put up another video here, which is about ego states, because I'm going to talk about those as well, and the drama triangle of victim, persecutor, and rescuer, which can happen in trios, but also in duo dynamics as well. Codependency also begins to often manifest, not only can it manifest in um, adulthood, but it can also manifest in childhood. So let's say a child ends up becoming a carer, for a parent, for whatever reason, the parent's ill, some way, again, incapacitated, or they are uh, uh, an addict of some sort, and so therefore need looking after, and the child is uh, uh, parentified in some way, adultified too soon, too quick. So the child switches into the role of carer. I have to look after everything. This can happen with I have to care for my siblings. This moves into people-pleasing behaviors, but also this kind of dynamic of needing someone else to be needy, to be rescued in order for me to fulfill um, how I have learnt to receive uh, love, validation, praise, um, I'm a good person because I do this. So I need you to be this way now. Um, and the other person doesn't move. If you look at it from through another lens, maybe the psychodynamic lens or attachment, again, this comes from this kind of uh, insecure, anxious attachment. It's a bit of a misnomer around it that it's needy, um, that someone's needy. And, and of course, this comes from the kind of attachment side of things. So I, I need you. Um, and yes, that can be part of codependency. And it can also come from being dismissive, avoidant as well, and quite independent. So it, it takes on many complex roles. Where this can begin to go wrong is when the person who, let's say, is the one who needs looking after, starts to get better. 
Maybe they start to heal, maybe they uh, recover from their addiction, um, maybe they recover from their accident, etc., etc. Maybe they become more self regulating, they're able to manage themselves more, they take more responsibility for their lives, they start moving out and getting into the world, getting a job, getting money, getting independence. Then this is sometimes where the conflict can begin to occur. So it's like, well, hang on a minute, you're better now. I don't like this because now I have no role, no purpose. I can't, I can't um, uh, fulfill this, this role I have. I can't fulfill this purpose um, with you. So now I'm angry with you because you've got better. Um, so I need you to be ill again. I need you to be uh, incapable again. I need you to be hopeless again. I need you to be a victim again in order for me to feel Good, this is where it starts moving around the victim, persecutor, um, and rescuer roles, which again, I'll put another video up here about it. If you look at it in a union light, things that are cast into the shadow, relegated into the shadow. I don't want to take responsibility for myself. I'm gonna push that away. I don't want to give myself self-validation. I don't want to change my role, that's too scary. I don't want to change my identification. So I'm gonna push that down and I'm going to fulfill it from here. So it's this kind of like, um, I'm gonna project out my needs onto the other person. So now I need that other person. So I'm gonna project out my sense of um, hopelessness and not having any meaning and project that out, out onto the other person. They're hopeless, they have no meaning and now I can rescue them. Uh, um, you know, kind of in an archetypal way, coming as the, I don't know, knight in shining armor, the rescuer, the hero, where I collect and rescue somebody else. And of course, what happens is when you rescue someone, if they continuously need rescue in happy days, you can keep fulfilling your role, you can keep playing out your script if you wanna look at it in a transactional analysis kind of way, or they get better, like I said, and then all of a sudden, now you have nowhere to project your shadow, your anima, your animus, whichever way you want to look at it in a Jungian kind of way. Speaking about transactional analysis, this has quite a nice way of kind of approaching this subject. It's called uh, symbiosis. And if, for instance, someone is in a child ego state, so that kind of rescue me, do it for me, spoiled child kind of syndrome, whatever, or I'm a bit hopeless, a bit useless, a bit power powerless, and they're in a relationship with someone, whatever that relationship may be, again, could be family, um, could be work related, could be romantically related. And that person is like an adult ego state or a parental ego state, caring, nurturing, or maybe even judgmental can also play in there. And this dynamic occurs where you kind of need each other to be able to play out the dynamic and no one is stepping into adult mature role and kind of going, hey, you know what? I keep enabling you to do this, so I'm gonna take a step back. I'm gonna give you some support, but you need to get yourself better um, if you are going to kind of uh, live a, uh, uh, a better life effectively without always needing to be rescued. But in order to take that step back, one has to also kind of go, okay, what am I getting from this? I must be getting some kind of meaning, fulfillment from it, it gives me purpose. Well, I need to find that for myself, not through somebody else. So this is how you begin to take a step back and break this kind of cycle. So it's always bring it back down on yourself because if you are in this codependent dynamic, you are both dependent on each other. Okay, if it's just a dependency, one is dependent on the other. If it's a codependency, you're both dependent on each other. And, you, and so you both need to take a step back, or at least one of you take a step back to break the cycle. Look at yourself. What am I getting from this? Why do I need to get this from here, from this person? And how can I get it for myself in a more healthy way where I don't keep them as a victim or I don't keep them as my rescuer um, and I can begin to move forward in my life as uh, self-regulating, kind of taking responsibility for myself, more control, more in um, peace and harmony with myself and not at the fear of, oh, I'm gonna lose any minute, um, my rescuer or my uh, victim effectively, you know, I'm gonna lose that and then I lose myself, you know, and who I am, well, you need to re-identify. So how do we recognize the signs that maybe we're in a codependent relationship? 
doing more than your share, giving more of yourself to somebody else at the expense of yourself, and you're kind of stretching yourself thin and thin all the time. That's one way to look at it. The Another way to spot it is an unhealthy reliance on relationships. I absolutely need this relationship in order to kind of function in the world. That would be another kind of, okay, I need to look at this. The third way to spot is uh, constantly seeking approval um, and kind of this, uh, yeah, approval, confirmation that you're doing a good thing, that they're still gonna be there. This Again, it's a reliance. And number four would be feeling trapped in the relationship but scared of being alone would also kind of give you this notion that you are codependent. Now, that doesn't mean to say that, you know, leaving a relationship is easy for anybody anyway. If the relationship is no longer serving you, it's unhealthy, It's maybe it's toxic, maybe it's abusive. But if there's a fear of being alone, a fear of venturing out into the world, then you kind of maybe going to go, I'm a bit dependent on being in a relationship. So maybe we slip into a codependency. So you can look at these things here. The way to start to break out of this is to maybe explore the then and there, how you were as a child, what your environment was like, and look how that's led to this, or maybe look at your, and this is a hard one to do, but kind of look at your level of self-esteem, your self-worth, are you being pulled down? Do you not give yourself enough credit that you've got the strength to do something of your own volition and by yourself? to take responsibility for yourself. And this would be the beginning of bringing to awareness this dynamic that you have within whatever the relationship is, uh, whatever type, and what you are doing and what you are getting from it. You bring it to awareness. And then as always, there's this kind of like big self-reflection and then I, and then this kind of like, okay, what do I want for myself? Do I want to continue this? Where do I want to be in a year's time? How do I want my life to look? Do I want to continue saving somebody? Do I want to continue being saved? Do I want to be, you know, I feel like I'm maybe, I'm constantly being kind of kept down. I'm being given lead boots. You know, I'm being, I want to get better, but I don't feel I can because then I might upset them, et cetera, et cetera. I feel a bit guilty for being the way I am or a bit of shame. If this is creeping in there, look at it, begin to start to decide for yourself what it is that you actually want from your life and the world around you, how you want to be. You can do this through journaling, you can do this through meditation, you can do this through therapy, uh, lots of self-work, yoga. If you're have addictions, go to get some help with it, get, get into recovery, um, start to take charge of life, take charge of your own finances. That's another one that creeps in normally with codependency. Well, they do all the finances and it's like, because they're good at it, but is it because they're good at it or is it because you're scared of doing it or it brings you anxiety? So begin to work, work and look at things like that and make these small incremental changes that you can manage and begin to climb away or climb out of an unhealthy codependency, codependency is unhealthy, but to begin to move more into independence and having a relationship which is more healthy based on you and I meeting together and we like meeting together. And if you do something for me, that's great. And if I do something for you, that's great. But I don't need you in order to survive through to the next day that's sometimes difficult if you've had an accident or you've got an illness and you need, do need care and help. But, you know, I don't need you in order to fulfill and create my identity of who I am. And if you threaten that, if you threaten to take that away, then I feel lost, lonely, thrown into the void, vulnerable, and I'm going to come forward with kicking and screaming against it and not wanting these changes to happen. So look at those kind of behaviors of yours and begin to make conscious steps to not engage in them. And it doesn't have to be aggressive and it doesn't have to be hostile, but it's starting to put boundaries in for yourself. So it's like, I'm not going to actually do this. I'm not going to actually engage with this. I want to, I want to, but I'm not going to because this is unhealthy for both of us. Um, and begin to move forward in those kind of directions. Some other tips are learning to set boundaries for yourself that you are not particularly prepared to cross over or have someone else cross over or transgress. 
as well as learning to say no, prioritizing your needs uh, sometimes within reason, obviously, you know, everything in kind of balance. So prioritizing your own needs sometimes, prioritizing your self-care, not stretching yourself so thin, learning to say no. There are many different ways to say no if you feel uncomfortable with a direct no. I can't do that right now at the moment. Actually, I would like to, but I'm a little bit busy and I have this and this and this to do. There are many different ways to say it without, and if you fear the confrontation, if you fear the conflict that might come back from that, yeah, it's kind of, again, conscious effort. You have to push through it. You have to do it for yourself and for the other person in order to break out of this negative cycle of codependency. It's also kind of a, a way of beginning to value yourself in a different way, v valuing yourself in a more healthy light, beginning to increase your self-worth. I am worthy of saving, obviously, because I want this person to save me. Therefore, I'm, I, I can save myself. I can find the strength. I can develop it. I can learn these skills. This self-worth of, I don't need to stretch myself so thin. I don't need to constantly live to, be, to, to rescue, save, bail out, help all the time. I can help them to help themselves for sure, you know, but I can take a step back from that because actually I value myself and my kind of my own priorities and needs sometimes need to be addressed. And this is a way of building your self-worth, your self-esteem, taking a kind of objective view of the situation. And like I said, making those conscious moves towards more independence and therefore a healthier relationship, both with yourself and with the other person. I hope that helps. I hope it was a good overview. And until I see you next time, please take really good care of yourselves. Adios.